back your homes or restore your dead to life. But perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. Hey everyone, today I received a message with several great Game of Thrones questions that are often asked in the community. I figured we could go over them and clear up a few bits of lore. With that being said, there will be spoilers for anything up through Season 6 as well as some book stuff, so this will be your warning. Alright, let's get into it. Do you think that the Song of Ice and Fire can also be a reference to the alliance between the Starks and the Targaryens after the Dance of Dragons? Great question. I've always really liked stories like this, you know the ones that are titled in a way that make you kind of wonder what it's referring to the whole time you're reading it? I think it's clear that Ice and Fire is in reference to the connection between the polar opposites Ice and Fire, or like you mentioned, the houses Stark and Targaryen. The question is what specifically is it in reference to? Could it be Jon Snow's duality as both a Stark and a Targaryen, or is it about the relationship between Jon's parents, Lyanna and Rhaegar? Maybe it could be about Jon's future relationship with Danny, or maybe it's a reference to the icy characteristics of White Walkers and their polar opposites being fire-breathing dragons. I like to think that the title, A Song of Ice and Fire, was named so because basically a song is a story, just a more condensed version that can effectively spread its message through musical narrative. And the words ice and fire kind of encompass the whole spectrum of different plots in the story. I hope that answers your question. The next one, is what do you think about the Winterfell Crips, Jon and his dreams and the story about Eggs of Vermax, the legend that the dragon heats the castle? Well, the Winterfell Crips are one of the most talked about locations in the whole known world. Everybody seems to think that either a custom tomb was hidden there for Jon Snow with some form of inscription proving that his mother was Lyanna Stark and his father was Prince Rhaegar Targaryen, and then a lot of people also think that there is either a Valyrian steel sword, a clutch of petrified dragon eggs, Rhaegar's legendary harp, or something else is hiding in the deepest part of the crypts. I've entertained each of these theories before, and if I had to answer you the best I could, I would say everything including Jon's dreams of the crypts as a boy contributes to the overwhelming sense that something in there needs to be investigated. Do you think that ice dragons exist? They were seen near the Sea of Chills. I am sure that in the trailer at the end there is an eye of one of them, but that will be one of Danny's dragons, or that eye is a reference to a giant's eye. I think you're talking about the eyewitness reports of ice dragon sightings all over the Shivering Sea. Apparently there have been countless reports coming from sailors in the northern waters. Now do I believe that there are ice dragons? Well let me say this, in a fantasy world with all these mythical creatures that I can't keep track of, why wouldn't there be any ice dragons? They have existed in other George R.R. Martin books, so why not this series? Plus all we know about the known world is that no one has even come close to exploring all of it. In fact, the continent in the far south known as Sothorios is supposedly just as long if not longer than Essos is wide. So until I get some new evidence that debunks the vast amount of ice dragon sightings in the Shivering Sea, I'll take it as a high possibility of their existence. At the end of the book, there are newborn dragons with Daenerys, and Jon with Ghost, the only person who is not clearly related with House Targaryen, book published in 2014 a little suggestion from GRRM about his bigger role in the story. I believe you're referring to Jon Snow being dead at the end of Dance of Dragons. It's the same timeline in the show when Jon is stabbed to death at Castle Black. If Jon is the one you're talking about having a bigger role related to the newborn dragons, or the popular three heads of the dragon theory, then yes, I think the fact that he does have Targaryen blood adds a lot of support for being one of the heads. And I swear I go back through the show and the books all the time trying to catch on to something new that I've glanced over before, and I'm sure much smarter people than me have been doing the same, and I bet that I won't be the one to uncover all the secrets of the story. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you like when I answer questions like this, please let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to do more. Other than that, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already. I do monthly giveaways of Season 6 of Game of Thrones on Blu-ray, so if you want to enter the next one for April 1st, all you have to do is subscribe, and since YouTube has changed things up a bit, make sure you check that notification bell, either on my homepage or by the subscribe button under the video. And for the next few days, I'm also doing a t-shirt sale on our new Red Woman shirts with a burning heart background. If you like Melisandre, then you'll probably love these. Alright guys, 
Have a great day. Take care and I will see you tomorrow.